The modern supercar cockpit. Wow, hasn't it evolved and what a busy place it is. Sitting here in Davey Reynolds' Mustang and uh, a couple of things just jumped out at me. I've got three sets of shift lights in front of me. But in terms of safety, something I'm deeply interested in racing, I feel safer in this than I ever have in any car I've ever driven, I've got to say, in my own career where this I'm very much inboard, I'm back in the car, I'm sitting in the car, I feel very central actually. But what I want to talk about today is the adjustability of the car from the cockpit because what happens in our world when a car is shipped out to race and the engineers have been working endlessly on shock absorbers, spring settings, camber, caster, wheel alignment, aerodynamics, roll centers, geometry, all of those things are fixed and importantly tyre pressures. But once it goes out on the track into the race, it's then up to the driver to adjust it. He's got four ways to do that. And I'll go through those just quickly. And why does he need to do that? Because weather conditions change. We're already seeing qualifying the difference a cloud will make. As rubber goes down, the grip of the circuit changes, so the tyre digs in, more grip, you need the car to be stiffer. Weather conditions can change out there, a sprinkle, sprinkle of rain, your fuel load gets lighter, that changes the dynamic of the car, uh, tyre pressures heat up and change, there's a lot of things change, and probably most of all, the tyre degradation we talk about. Your tyre from the start of a stint to the end of a stint might be a second a lap difference, that's massive. So the four things you've got to really deal with that are driving technique, quite obviously, but then the anti-roll bars and your brake bias. Now, we've got our sequential gear shifter here, but these two devices here, you see the driver's dealing with a lot. They're your front and rear anti-roll bars. The red one, usually R for rear, so drivers don't forget, and the blue one will be the front one. And you can push a little button there and push those forward or back to stiffen or soften the front of the car. So let's just say, for example, the rear of my car, okay? I've been driving really hard. I've taken a lot of energy out of the rear tire. They're very slippery and sliding around a lot. So I might grab my red one, my rear anti-roll bar, and bring it backwards a little bit, just to soften the rear of the car and make it a bit more compliant. So you can do a dance with both of those bars to try and balance your car. And what balance means is a balance between understeer where the car doesn't point where you want, and oversteer, where the car is sliding. So you want a nice neutral car. And then the final piece in the puzzle is this. These are brake bias adjusters. Now these come in many forms. Sometimes it's a dial, sometimes it's a lever. You'll see Shane Van Gisbergen doing a lot with his brake bias lever here. This particular team uses these. Front bias, rear bias. So that migrates the front brake pressure when you put your foot on the pedal to the front or the rear. Again, based on how much grip you've got on your tyres front or rear, what your fuel load's doing, what your balance is. What's really interesting for me though, is in the years I've been watching the game, we've migrated from pretty clunky old anti-roll bar adjusters on cables that you might adjust once or twice a lap at best, and a brake bias adjuster which was on a knob over here, you might do a couple of times a race. Now, if you're watching a telecast in-car cameras, you'll see these guys are changing the anti-roll bars several times a lap and the bias the same way. It's come a long, long way.